everyone! Melbourne welcomed international tourists for the first time in nearly two years. It's about time to start planning your life in Melbourne again. Whether you are looking into buying or renting a house to study or work, this video will help you decide which Melbourne's neighbourhood is the right fit for you. Please bear in mind the list is not in order of ranking by any means. So they're all amazing suburbs with heaps of things to do. The first suburb on this list is Collingwood. It is just three kilometers from the CBD, which makes it very walkable to some of the iconic CBD attractions such as Melbourne Museum and the Royal Exhibition Building. But once you settle into Collingwood, I bet you wouldn't want to get out of this trendy suburb. Hipsters in the north have started to relocate themselves to Collingwood as Fitzroy is getting priced out in the market. There are tons of great bars, op shops, cafes on Smith Street, the Toad's Great Darling and Proud Mary are our carefully picked choices of bars and cafes to visit. Young professionals and students are often spotted in this hood. I believe Collingwood is such a fantastic inner suburb to live in for anyone who commits to the CBD. The median one-bedroom apartment for rent starts from 380. If you are conscious of the price of the rent here, then you could opt for share house options which are plenty to choose from in this neighborhood. So, when you step out of the number one tram at Albert Park, you'll instantly notice there's something special about this suburb. Out of the hustle and bustle of the CBD, this leafy hood creates a tranquil and family-friendly environment for everyone. Just a short walk or drive to South Melbourne Beach, Middle Park Beach and Arbor Park Lake absolutely ideal for those who want to have the best of both worlds of dynamic city life and peaceful residential living. The medium one-bedroom apartment for rent starts from 348, which I found utterly surprising. Now the next suburb may be a contentious choice, but definitely don't overlook Ducklands as an option for close inner city living. I mean, it's practically in the city with beautiful views of the bay. It's a fairly new suburb compared to some of the others on this list, and some believe it hasn't really delivered what was promised of it. However, with the district Docklands giving you plenty of shopping and eating options, then I think it's a brilliant choice to live in the city without living in the city. Public transport options are great, with trams getting you into the city in a couple of minutes, and Southern Cross Station giving you options for travel to the suburbs, as well as regional towns like Bendigo, Ballarat, and Geelong. There's also a state-of-the-art new library, with Library at the Dock offering amazing facilities including a music recording studio, cafe and gallery spaces. The medium weekly price for a one-bed apartment will set you back 350 bucks, so overall great bargain to be had. But if Dockland still isn't close enough to the action for you and you really want to be right in the thick of things, then you can always move into one of my favourite suburbs of Melbourne, the Melbourne CBD itself. Here you'll find endless choices of bars, cafes, restaurants and shopping options where you can always find new places to hang in one of its many famous laneways. The price may surprise you, since the pandemic we've seen a massive drop in prices and the median weekly price for a one bed apartment is sitting at $320. With free trams meaning you can get around your new hood easily without spending a cent. Now let's take you to the inner east where you can make a, a great home in Hawthorne. The main strip is down Glenferry Road, which is home to Swinburne University, meaning there is a big student vibe here. Because of this, you'll find some great cafes, restaurants and bars, and the brilliant bookstore Reddings, which many locals love to visit. The median weekly price for a one-bedroom in Hawthorne is at 315 so it's a great affordable suburb, which is still only a short tram or train ride from the city centre. A bit further in the southeast, along the bay, you'll find the beachside suburb of Elwood, now Elwood may not get the hype of the neighbouring suburb of St Kilda, but don't overlook this fantastic option to live. You've got the benefit of living by the beach and you can cycle along the canal while you shop at the many organic supermarkets or chill with friends at one of the many cafes. There's also a relaxed mode of living here and the median weekly house price is just 310, so you can't go wrong with those stats. If you're looking for another suburb with some hipster vibes and plenty of things to do, the Northcote might be the right fit for you. Its main entertainment district lies down High Street where you'll find heaps of bars, cafes and boutique shops. It's not far from the city centre, lying just north of its hipster cousin Fitzroy. The difference is that Northcote is cheaper and with a bit more of a family hipster vibe. Locals love the Northcote Social Club and there's other great bars along High Street making it a great place if you love nightlife. Public transport options are plentiful with trams, buses and a train station giving you really easy access to the rest of Melbourne. The weekly price for a one-bed apartment comes to $320 a week, making it one of the most affordable hipster hotspots in Melbourne. If you're looking for something a bit more suburban, yet with a lovely main strip in Union Road, then Ascot Vale located in the northwest might be your cup of tea. 
This suburb has seen a bit of a transformation recently and uh, Union Road has some great bars, cafes and restaurants including the local favourite of Union Hotel where you can get some nice cold beers or have a great pub dinner. Transport options are good too with a tram running from the city and also a quick ride to High Point Shopping Centre. The median weekly price for a one bed apartment is a bargain at just $290 making it a very affordable and livable suburb to call home. If you're a fan of Italian food, then you'll love one of Melbourne's most famous suburbs, Carlton. It's close to Melbourne Uni, meaning you'll find a very student vibe here with Ligon Street providing amazing restaurants, gelaterias, bars and boutique stores. Another great benefit is that it's only a short walk to the CBD and has lovely parks in the area. Last but not least is the small, sometimes forgotten suburb of Clifton Hill. Even though it's so close to the CBD, Clifton Hill still manages to have a very quiet and relaxed atmosphere with lovely parks and gardens. It's also very easy on the wallet with medium weekly one bed apartments going for just $295. There's not as much entertainment when it comes to bars and cafes in the area. However, the location puts you right next to all the other burbs with plenty of things to do. And the public transport options are great too with buses, trams and a train. The median weekly price for a one bedroom apartment is just $310, making it a very affordable suburb still in the inner city. So this has been the best suburbs of Melbourne. Let us know in the comments below where you live, what suburb you think should be on this list. And we'll see you next time. Bye.